Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that last week Skylum Software gave me a beta version of Aperty and I did my first video on it. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. In that video, I mentioned that in a future video, I demonstrate how to do full body sculpting and how to use masking in Aperty. That's what we're going to be doing today. Very quickly though, I want to mention several people have emailed me asking me if they were going to be discontinuing Luminar Neo. The answer is no. Luminar Neo is meant for the photographer, the photo enthusiast, who mainly photographs landscapes, travel images, street photography, maybe the occasional portrait. But on the other hand, if you're a photographer who needs to get professional level editing results when editing a portrait, then you're going to want to consider using Aperty. So Luminar Neo is meant for the photo enthusiast who photographs all different types of images, whereas Aperty is meant more for the professional or at least for the photographer who needs to get professional level results when editing a portrait. Now, we're going to edit this raw file of Courtney. Now, in my first video on Aperty, I demonstrated how to get images into Aperty. Again, I'll have a link to that video in the description below this video. You can see I already have this image in Aperty. It is as un it is an unedited RAW file. I like to start out by cropping if my image needs to be cropped. You can see that I didn't center Courtney very well. She's off to the side a little bit. So I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm going to keep the original aspect ratio. I'm just going to grab from the right hand side and put her more in the middle, tighten it up a little bit. And I don't want to crop out her boot down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to push it up just a tiny bit. That's it. Now I do want to mention something I didn't talk about in that first video. It, the optics editing is available in Aperty. Uh, it's right here in the crop tool. Open up optics and you could correct distortion, remove chromatic aberration, and defringe uh, the image here as well. So you could do that in Aperty just like you could do that in Luminar Neo. Now I'm done with the crop tool, so I'm going to jump over to the essentials panel. And here we have develop raw. And I'm going to go there and I want to edit the tone in the image. So I'm going to jump down to the light section. I'm going to take highlights all the way down. I'm going to open up shadows a little bit. I want to get a white point. And to do that in Aperty, just tap the J key. And when you tap the J key, you'll turn on the clipping indicators. And with the clipping indicators on, I could go to the whites slider, move this to the right. Eventually, you'll see some red come through. That means I'm blowing out the highlights in those areas. I'm just going to back it off till all that red dissipates. I don't like to blow out highlights. I still have a tiny bit of red up here at the top, but I'm not worried about that going to go to the black slider. I still have those clipping indicators on. I'm going to move this to the left. Eventually blue will come on the screen. That means I'm crushing the shadows. I don't want to crush the shadows too much. So I'll move that to the right till most of that dissipates. That looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the clipping indicators off by tapping that J key again. So they're off. Now, if I needed to do anything with curves, color, let's say I wanted to increase vibrance or saturation or do something with HSL, that's all available in Aperty. I can convert the image to black and white and edit the black and white mix. Don't need to do that either for this image. I could sharpen the image. I usually don't sharpen my images too much. So, and if I would, or if I did, I would do that at the end. So I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, so sharpen detail structure, that all has to do with sharpening. So I don't need to do any of that. Uh, this was shot at ISO 64, so there's no noise to speak of. So I'm not worried about noise reduction. I'm just going to jump right into the portrait editing tools by clicking on this like little icon right here. And you'll open up the retouch section. What I like to do, I've been using Aperty now for like a little over a week or around a week. I like to use the blemish removal slider and the skin smoothing slider in conjunction with one another. So what I'll do is I'll move each of them somewhere towards the middle at the same time. Now you got to let it kick in, especially when you make this first adjustment. Um, it's going to take a second to map her face like find where her nose is, where her teeth are, where her eyes are, and so on, and then it will kick in. So that first adjustment may take a little while. And you could do a before after by clicking on this little eyeball here and hold it in. There's before, there's after. Or you could hit the backslash key and hold that in before after. You could get a side by side view, click this right here and you get this little like slider here as well. If you prefer to do it that way. Now, either way, uh, what you could do is zoom in, kind of pull down here, and then get a before after by holding in the backslash key. There's before, there's after. You can see it worked pretty well. I'm going to crank it up a little more. I'm going to zoom out. I found that it works faster if you're zoomed out than if you're zoomed in. That's why I'm zooming out. 
So we're going to crank these up more in this case. Now, if you crank them up so high because you want to remove every single blackhead, every single uh, pimple, you may find that the skin looks too smooth and you want to bring some pore detail back. In that case, you can move this detail slider here to the right or this one here to the right or maybe pull to the right and you'll bring back some pore detail. Typically, I don't like to go max on these sliders. I don't like to smooth the skin too much. I still want her to look like her. So what I will do instead is I'll allow this to process. You can see processing down here and see what I'm dealing with. There's a couple of blackheads up in here, maybe a couple over here. And, you know, maybe I'll try to eke out a little more here, maybe move freckles, even though she doesn't have freckles, but we'll see if that works on some of the blackheads. Move that to the right. Um, you can zoom out, zoom back in, let it process to kick back in. See what that does once it's done processing. And again, I am working with the beta version. I anticipate when the uh, application is released later this fall that it will work a lot faster. What I prefer to do, though, is go to the eraser tool. You can see the eraser tool is right up here. Click on that. There's actually two tools here. There's the eraser tool and the clone and stamp tool. I'm just going to stay with the eraser tool. By default, this will probably be on. That means I'll click once, for example, here. And then it will take the time to remove that. And you can see it removed it. And it kind of blurs out. And it'll come back in. That is slower, uh, typically. So what I'll do instead is I'll keep this off. And then I could come in and I could click on a bunch of them at one time. And then click the erase. Now, the downside of doing it this way is that sometimes, particularly on areas that might be near like her hair over here or near an edge, it might like smear a little bit and you run that risk of like getting that smear and then you got to start all over again. We'll click erase, let it do its thing. And it kind of blurs out and then comes back in. Yeah, it looks all right. So um, we'll close this tool down. We'll go back to our essentials tab. We'll zoom out, zoom back in, kind of pull it down, let it kick in. Yeah. That looks all right. There's before and there's after. All right. So we're still, uh, we'll go to this uh, retouch tab again. Uh, you could uh, face skin color correction, move that to the right. If, um, you know, they have like red blotches on their skin, dark circles under her eyes, move this to the right, let that kick in. You can see down here it's applying it. Takes a second to kick in. You can see how that did pretty good. There's before, there's after, before, after. Um, face brighten, this is what I usually like to do, brighten up her face. See, when you're zoomed in, you also get kind of these lines. You got to zoom back out. It works better when you're zoomed out. It works faster. Again, that's probably something that's unique to the beta that will be improved. So, uh, so far so good. She has a tiny bit of shine. Maybe move that to the right a little bit. I'm going to edit her eyes. So I'm going to turn, close down skin. We'll open up the eyes. And I'm going to keep the original iris. I'm going to add iris, iris flare. Not Irish flare, but iris flare. Then I'll add a little light to the bottom of her eyes. Uh, again, I cover this in, in my first video. And again, I'll have that linked in the description below. Redness removal. If there's any blood vessels showing, this will minimize those. We can do eye whitening. This will whiten the whites of her eyes. And eye enhancement will actually enhance the iris. Now, I do want to mention very quickly that if someone's eyes just didn't come back out well in your image, you could actually replace the iris by going up here. The same tool is in Luminar Neo, so if you're familiar with it in Luminar Neo, you could use it here. So you can give someone different color eyes. So she has blue eyes, give her like brown eyes or something like that. I usually um, never use this unless... The person is brown eyes because often brown eyes just look really muddy in a photograph and I like to uh, show their eyes a little more. So then if they have brown eyes, I will replace their brown eyes with brown eyes and it just looks better generally. So that's when I will use that. So uh, you could um, close that down and we'll move to mouth. We're going to whiten your teeth, move that to the right, that kick in and a little bit of whitening, not a lot like that. 
And then we could do makeup. I did mention in that first video that I'm going to do a video dedicated to makeup. So you could apply makeup to someone. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video, but I will say that for a future video. Now, body skin, if she had uh, blemishes on her body somewhere, we can do some smoothing there as well. And bring back detail with the detail slider by moving it to the right. And if there was some blotchy color, we could move this to the right as well. But in this case here, there's not a lot of skin showing for that matter. And there really isn't a lot of blemishes or to worry about. So that is that. Now we're going to get to the body sculpting part. Uh, to do that, you click on this little icon right here and you're in the reshape uh, section. So we could slim her face. I did this in the first video just to demonstrate how it's done. It does take a second to kick in. So you could see there's uh, that. There's a before and there's after. You can see how it slimmed her face. Uh, you can go to her eyes. This is something I typically do. I make the eyes a little bigger by moving the slider to the right just a little bit. And I don't do much with eyebrows, so I'm not going to do that. And again, I demonstrated that in that first video. Uh, we'll go to nose, and you can change the shape of her nose. I did that in the first video. I'm not going to do it here. Uh, mouth, you can change the position of her lips. I'm not going to do that here. Here's the body part. You have the shape slider. If you want to make someone a little thinner, move this to the right. A little heavier, move it to the left. So we'll move it to the right. You can see how it just slims her down. And I really don't like these controls. I don't know why. I just, I don't know, something about me. Okay, there's the belly. You could suck her abdomen in a little bit. That's really all it is to it, you know, to do. Um, just could slim someone down or give them a little extra weight. It mainly uh, works in the middle, the thorax area. It doesn't do anything with their legs, as you could see. Uh, it's just something if you get a request, someone says, oh, you know, can you, I look so thin in this. I look, you know, sickly. Can you just put a little extra weight on me? Then you can do that. Um, if you're a photographer who's doing an advertising campaign, you may get told that you have to do that. Uh, then you could do it. Uh, generally speaking, it's not uh, something I care to do because uh, I think she looked fine the way she was, but. Either way, those tools are available here if you need to use them. So that is that, as easy as that. Now, I did mention about masking in Aperti. Super easy to use. We're going to go right to the masking panel, which is right here. And you can see that um, it's saying masking is available only for essentials and creative tools only. You can see I'm in this reshape tool. That doesn't mean you can't mask. It just means that you can't use masking with the reshape tool, at least in the beta version. We're going to go to the Essentials tab, and then you can see all of a sudden masking is available. I can mask all the people or the background. What we'll do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to mask the people first. So we'll click there, and we have Person 1. Click on that so it's active. You'll notice when I open up the Develop tab, it just says Develop. It doesn't say Develop Raw, and everything's zeroed out. If I click on full image, it says develop raw. And those adjustments I did earlier are here. So if you want to do global adjustments, click on full image and you could re-edit anything here. If you want to just edit the person, click on all people, click on person, then you could edit the person. It couldn't be more easier. Now, in this case, I want to make her a bit brighter. So I'll just add a little exposure to her. Now I'm going to go to the background. So we'll click on that. It's going to create a mask for the background. Now you'll notice that exposure is at zero, but for the person it's at point two. For the full image it's at zero, but there's other adjustments that were done. So we're going to go to that background again, and I want to make the background a little dark. So just put more emphasis on my model. So I pulled that down. Also, if I wanted to, I could go to, let's say, structure, and I could pull structure down on the background to kind of blur the background out a little more if I wanted to. I could do that there as well. Now, if I go back to that full image, I could finish this editing off by clicking on the full image. So I'm editing the entire image. And in this case, in, with the full image, I would go to this tool right here, which is creative. And remember in that, Last video, I put some creative lighting on the model. I'm not going to do that here, but I am going to go to vignette and I'm going to put a darker vignette. And I'll click the vignette center like right there. Oops, I want to click the vignette center. There we go. Right there. 
and then I could come in and do the vignette. It takes a second for the vignette. I noticed in the beta version, the vignette is a little like flaky applying vignette. It takes a second to kick in. There it is, it kicked in there. All right, so you can see it's working now. So put a little vignette on her. And that's that. So that is how to use the masking in the body sculpting in uh, Aperty. In, uh, in a future video, I'm going to demonstrate the makeup all in one video. And I'm going to do a separate video where I'm going to do like the studio light and I'm going to get deeper into light spot and stuff like that, which I touched on in my first video. But I'll do a separate video for that. So expect to see uh, two more videos on Aperty before it's actually released. And I do want to mention very quickly that I am going to do full training on Aperty, like a whole series of videos on Aperty. And when that, um, hopefully I'll have that done and ready the day Aperty is released when they have a firm release date. I hope to have a firm release date for that training. So I'll have that available on my website. Uh, you could check that out. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.